chapter 21, question 14. I've gone, I've gone ahead and drawn out a negative charge of negative 0.55 microcoulombs, and that is exerting an upward force on Q2, or the unknown charge, which is equal to 0.2 newtons. So we're going to, since we have this labeled Q1 and Q2, this is the force of Q1 on Q2. All right. And as they're set up, this unknown charge is directly below Q1, and there's a distance between them of 0.3 meters. Part A is asking us, what is the unknown charge, its magnitude, and its sign? Without doing any calculations, we can easily figure out the sign. We know that like charges repel and opposite, pos opposite charges attract. So we know that Q2 is a positive charge since this force is going up or towards the other charge. Now to find the magnitude. We have Q1, we have a force, and we have a distance. From those variables that we already have, we know we're going to be using the Coulomb force, or the Coulomb law. Coulomb law is this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the values that we have. F is 0.2 newtons. We have K, which is the constant, 8.988 times 10 to the ninth newtons meters squared per coulomb squared. And we're going to multiply this by Q1, absolute values. Don't forget those absolute values. Force is always a positive um, number. So we're going to have the absolute value of Q1. Here we have negative 0.55 microcoulombs. We want SI units, so we need to get rid of that micro. So we're going to multiply negative 0.55 times 10 to the negative 6 to get coulombs. Times 2 Q2. R squared is the distance between them. 0.3 meters squared. All right. We have everything filled in except Q2, which is what we're looking for, the charge of the second um, particle. Doing a little bit of algebra and isolating Q2 on one side of the equation, you should get about 3.64 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. All right, that ends part A. Part B is asking you for the magnitude and direction of the force of the unknown charge exerting on Q1. All right. We know by Newton's third law that F of 2 on 1 should equal the opposite of F of 1 on 2. So we have F of, oh, I'm sorry. This is true. We can also say the negative of f of 2 on 1 is equal to f of 1 on 2. We have f of 1 on 2. So we know that 0.2 equals the negative of f of 2 on 1. Therefore, f of 2 on 1 equals negative 0.2 newtons. Now I said before that the force doesn't have a sign. In this calculation, this is taking into account the direction of the force. This negative sign is simply saying that this force, F2 on 1, is in the opposite direction of F1 on 2. If you're going to ask for the magnitude of F2 on 1, you're going to say 0.2 newtons. Now we can go ahead and draw F2 on 1. Since it's negative, it's in the opposite direction of F1 on 2 and it's going to have the exact same magnitude. 